Hello, this is MEI Further Maths Core Pure. We're in the first complex numbers section and on the first video on solving quadratic equations with no real roots. You can watch the video straight through, but you will probably find it helpful sometimes to pause the video and try things out for yourself before continuing to watch. Let's start with a straightforward quadratic equation such as you will have seen at GCSE. How would you solve it? Pause the video for a moment while you have a go. OK, you'll have factorised x squared minus 5x plus 6 to get x minus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0. This gives us two solutions, x equals 3 or x equals 2. So far, all the quadratic equations that you'll have met in textbooks will have had either two real roots or a repeated real root. Here's an example of a quadratic equation with a repeated root. Sometimes, though, you won't have been able to factorise them. How would you solve this one? You could complete the square or use the formula. Pause the video for a moment while you solve this by completing the square. OK, this is what we get. Completing the square, we have x minus 2 all squared. That gives us x squared minus 4x as we wanted, but it also gives us a plus 4 which we don't want. And then we've got the minus 13. Rearranging this, we get x minus 2 squared is equal to 17. Square rooting both sides, x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 17. And we end up with x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 17. This worked OK because the discriminant of this quadratic expression is greater than 0. That's the bit inside the square root sign in the formula. Remember the formula for solving a quadratic equation? x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. The discriminant is this bit here inside the square root sign. In our case, we've got b squared is 4 minus 4 all squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 13. That comes out to be 16 plus 52, which is 68. So that's greater than 0. So if we were using the formula, we'd find that we could square root uh, the discriminant OK. So with this quadratic equation, we still get two real roots, but they're both irrational because the square root of 17 is an irrational number. Now look at this one. Pause the video and try to solve it by completing the square. OK, we start the same as we did before. x minus 2 all squared. That gives us a plus 4, so we take that off. But this time we add 13. When we rearrange this, we get x minus 2 all squared is equal to minus 9. So we get a problem when we try to square root. x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of minus 9. However, we're going to plough on regardless. We can rearrange the square root of minus 9 using the normal rules of thirds to get plus or minus the square root of 9 times the square root of minus 1 and get x minus 2 equals plus or minus 3 times the square root of minus 1. So what do we do from here? Well, we're going to make up a new number. 
the solution can be obtained by making up a number for the square root of minus 1. We're going to assume that it does exist and we're going to call it i, i for imaginary. So instead of our solution being x equals 2 plus or minus 3 times the square root of minus 1, we're going to get x equals 2 plus or minus 3i. So we've still got two solutions, 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i. We call 2 plus 3i a complex number because it's got more than one part. 2 is called the real part of the number and 3 is called the imaginary part of the number. What's exciting is that we can now solve any quadratic equation just by inventing this one new number i. We don't need to invent any more new numbers. i is sufficient now to solve any quadratic equation. There are more notes on integral on solving quadratic equations with no real roots. That's the end of this short video. The next video in the series is on adding and subtracting complex numbers.